managing warranties, and warranty returns. There are many ways to handle parts and labor warranties in Max Tracks, from how the warranty is handled on the RO, as well as getting a credit from the vendor for warranty returns, both for parts and labor claims. Let's take a look at some of these scenarios. In a repair order, we can discount a part or a labor charge if the work is under warranty. Let's look at the labor first. I'll double click on the labor service line and by selecting this checkbox, the labor is discounted automatically 100% and this discounted amount is tracked in our expenses in the 63410 Warranty Discounts Expense Account by default if you're a full accounting user so you can track your warranty discount expenses. Click OK and let's see how that looks on a part. Double click on the part and here again we can check the warranty checkbox and the part is discounted 100% automatically. This percentage could be adjusted to discount only a percentage in the case of a prorated battery warranty. Again, the discounted dollar amount is being tracked in our financial warranty discounts expense account, the 63410 account. Let's preview how that repair order will look. Now let's discuss reimbursement. If I was not going to be reimbursed from the vendor, I would do the process we just covered as this tracks the warranty work as an expense to my company. However, if I warrantied a part for a customer that was also under warranty with my vendor and my vendor was going to reimburse me for that part, I would not discount that part with the warranty checkbox. Rather, I would sell the warranty part to the customer for the full purchase price and then return that part for that same purchase price on the invoice for two reasons. First, to reflect on that RO, the customer does not have to pay for that warrantied part, and two, so we have a part in stock to return it to the vendor for a warranty refund. Remember, we have to have a part in stock to be able to return it for a warranty refund. Let's see how to do this. Now I would not check the warranty checkbox in the part sales detail information screen. Let's uncheck this. Instead, with the labor line highlighted, I would check this returns button down here and return that part. Whoa, wait a minute. Note this. You cannot put returns in sales on the same RO if there are invoice level discounts on the RO. So just make sure you're not applying any invoice level discounts, a discount for the entire RO, if you have to enter a return here. I'll click yes here and remove those invoice level discounts. So now I would select that same part that I'm replacing that I'm charging full price to the customer for and OK. And here you can see that the customer is not going to pay a cent for that part under warranty. Plus, I will have that quantity back in stock to return to the vendor for a warranty credit. Let's preview that. And close. Please see the training video called Manage Returns and Enter Vendor Credits for more information about managing returned parts. Now let's say we have a labor warranty claim. I would use the same warranty discount checkbox method I first showed you on that RO for the labor. And remember, that will go into my warranty expense account. We'll leave all this the same as we did in the beginning, nothing to return for a labor warranty. Let's click save only here. Now once we've received the labor warranty reimbursement from the vendor, enter that reimbursement as a credit on the vendor account posted to that warranty expense account. To reduce the expense, since we don't actually have to pay for that labor warranty discount after all, let's see how this is done in the vendor record. From the menu bar, click Vendors and select 
Accounts Payable Vendor List, double click on the vendor name, and click the Options button here and create new credit. Enter the vendor's credit memo number if you have one. Tab, tab, tab. Enter the amount of the credit. Tab. Enter a note if you like. And tab again. Since I discounted that warranty labor for the customer that I posted to my financial warranty discount expense account, that 63410, I'm going to credit that expense account here since my vendor is actually covering that warranty expense. You could conversely create an income account to receive that reimbursement as income if you like and leave the warranty expense intact. This is a matter of personal and your CPA's preference. Click OK. Now we have a credit on the vendor account we can use towards future purchases. Or let's say I'm on COD with that vendor and they just issued me a refund. Click the Options button, select Receive AP Credit Refund, click in the Use column, and then click OK. The vendor might have given me back cash, written me a check, and click OK. That payment will now show up in our undeposited funds just like any other payment we take throughout the day from our customers. Another scenario is calculating a prorated credit on things like batteries and tires that carry a prorated warranty. There are a few ways to handle this. However, we found the simplest way to handle prorated parts is just to discount the part to the prorated percentage in the warranty section, which means you track the discount as an expense like before. This will reduce your profit on that part sale and on the overall RO since the cost of that warranty part will be the full amount, yet the sales amount is less. On the other side of the transaction, you will be restocking your batteries with a battery that costs you less as your battery salesperson typically applies a prorated warranty amount to the cost of your next battery. So the next time you sell that same battery, your profit will look much more higher as the cost will be less. However, the numbers do come out in the wash in your overall financials, just not at the individual RO level. One more scenario to review, let's say a customer wants a refund for a warranty repair that they had handled at another shop. Without an open repair order to credit, we can go into the customer record from the customer search icon. And from the customer options button, click create new credit. As we mentioned before, you can disperse that credit to the warranty discount expense account, the 63410 account, just like we did when we discounted out the RO. However, another option is to create an expense account, for example, customer goodwill, to disperse the credit to. Please see your CPA for assistance in setting this up in your system. Enter the amount of the credit, tab, make a note if you like, tab, and disperse that credit to the 63410 Financial Warranty Discount Expense Account and click OK. Click OK again and save and close. Now this customer has $150 credit available on their customer account for the next time they come into the shop. Or if the customer wants the money instead of the credit on account, click the Customer Options button again and select Refund AR Credit. Click in the Use column and click OK. Here we can choose how to refund them the credit amount by cash, check, or credit their credit card. Let's say we'll issue them a check and click OK. 
And here we can print them a company check and print. And this concludes the lesson on managing warranties and warranty returns.